What's up survivors, I'm Natural Born and welcome to episode 14 of the 7 Days to Die 1.0 Survival Guide. And the goal for today's episode is we're going to do some questing for Jen and do some more exploring in the burnt forest biome. Now one thing I did notice, I have a world on PC and it is this world, that is how I get my screenshots for the thumbnails. And I did notice on the other side of this town, there is another Trader Jen. So we could potentially go pay her a visit. It's always a bonus having multiple traders in one town. And let me know how you guys feel about that too, because one thing I did consider doing, because we do have to do a lot of building in this series at some point, but we also need to find where we're going to put our main base. It will be somewhere in this biome. Now I could waste recording time searching in this world for that building spot or I could try find it in my spare time on PC and then we can just travel there during the series. Ultimately it will save a lot of time. And I think that's what I might do. We're just going to sell her a couple things. She restocks day 19. So I don't know if she's got anything that we may need. Scrapping for fun would be really good. I would love to get my hands on a ratchet or even an impact driver. So we're just going to have a quick look at our skills, see what we are able to make because as soon as we have enough forge ahead for the cement mixer, you can see we're eight books off it, we will be heading back to base. Obviously, more armoured up books would be nice, more robotics would be nice. As soon as we get tier 6 on the stun baton, we can craft one of those. Once we push down to 76, then that opens up robotic drone crafting for us. But yeah, apart from that, harvesting tools and salvage tools. You can see there, ratchet and impact driver. Either one of those will be a massive help to us at the moment. It's going to help us make a lot of extra dukes. All right, she doesn't have anything too interesting. We're going to check out her jobs. So that nice fetch clear next door, 200 meters. And yeah, as I mentioned as well, if we pop over to our quest, you can see here we just need to do three more tier twos or two tier twos and a tier one. I would like to get those done in today's episode if possible. That way that'll open up our tier three jobs. There is a tier three POI back in our hometown that I would love to showcase to you guys. Bob's Boars and Carl's Corn. That is a POI that has a guaranteed spawn for Grace. Now, if you don't know who Grace is, Grace is a ginormous, radiated, mutated boar. She is very strong, so do not take her lightly. You can get yourself a decent amount of rotten flesh bones and leather from harvesting her and not only that just like the zombie bears and the dire wolves grace also has a guaranteed chance to drop a red loot bag uh might as well collect those pipes since we have a lot all right what have we got in the mailbox paper since we have a few jobs to get done today we're just going to crack straight into it and then we may be able to explore the rest of the town during the night because yeah, one of the big things that we did find was the stun repulsor mod for the stun baton. And yeah, you have no idea how badly I would like to get back to base to craft one of those. Alright, I'm just going to leave that crap. We're, um, we're not going to be taking a lot here. Uh, there is a lot of snakes down here too. Watch out for them. I mean, easy little bit of meat for us. You can hear them. Right, there's one. These snakes are part of the POI as well. But yes, Bob's Boars and Carl's Corn is definitely a POI I'd like to sink my teeth into. Not only is it good for meat and grace, but you can also... Is that a snake? You can also get the super corn seed recipe from that POI, along with a few bits of super corn. Now, they're not going to do you any good, but the seed recipe, they most certainly will. On top of that, there is a lot of boars. You're going to more than likely walk out of that POI quite a few stacks of meat. 
Now, I do believe in this room up here there is a cement mixer. And if so, that is a guaranteed forge ahead bit. Yeah, right there. So I probably should have come into this POI and double dipped it, but that's all good. Watch out for that feral. So you big mama. Alright, nice and easy. Ooh, bit of damage there. Alright, arm it up and scrapping for fun. Might as well grab the wood while we're here. One thing that I do want to point out too is I try to reply to all comments on this channel. I've been a bit slack lately, but there has been a lot of comments. There's that forge ahead. I do want to apologise for that and just to let you guys know that even if I don't get the opportunity to reply to your comments, I am reading them and I do appreciate them. Not too sure if we have the book to get acid from that. I probably should have checked that. some books back here there are a lot of secret stashes in POIs as well I do not know where all of them are and I'm not talking about trash that's hidden behind a picture I'm talking about a proper hidden stash if you guys do know where they are feel free to let me know in the comments down below look at that another forger head only needs six more beautiful and that door's locked and, oh no, we've already been down here. Alright, guess we're going upstairs. Oh, I know this one. They're all in the bloody roof. Both rooms. That room, a lot of them. This room, a lot of them. Shut that, you can see that they're gone ahead and woken up over there. Oh that, nice. Stand up big mama. Nice easy hole to get you through. Alright, easy as that. I did think there were going to be more zombies in there. I might be uh, <laughs> thinking of this place as an infested quest. That's fine though, we'll take those goodies. Um, I'm just going to scrap both of those. I'm not looking to grab a lot of loot at the moment. Like I said, I just want to power through these quests and get our tier 3s unlocked. Get our supplies back here. Perfect. Alright, what do we got in the main loot stash? Tier 3 athletic gloves. Plus 15 max stamina bonus. That is pretty good, especially if you have problems with the stamina. We are rocking the Preacher Gloves, though, for their boosted damage to the undead. And we'll take that mod. Scrap the bandage. Well, we've already got heaps of crap on us. And no pistol. Oh, Cheeky books and some paper. Probably toilet paper. Uh, looks like there is no easy way out of here, so <laughs> we're going through the front door. Oh, hello there. Ooh, sewing kit. Very nice. It's crazy how often you might find yourself running out of sewing kits now, since they are one of the main components used to craft armor crafting kits. In other worlds that I play on, I've actually taken to buying sewing kits from the traders when I see them. Now, if you're doing your looting properly and you're looting goddamn everything that you come across, you shouldn't have too many issues, but that is always an option. And yeah, I did notice that town right in front of us too is a big one. Biggest town in the desert. And the desert is the next biome that we are going to. Although we found a tier 1 AK here, that is still not a good weapon. We will be needing better weapons. I should speak oh into God. the weapons to give myself a higher chance at finding the magazines for them. Alright, another close job. 184. 
Okay, the Shady careful. Swine. I wonder if that's next door. Scrapping for fun, armoured up, and vehicles. Very nice. Just going to go ahead. I'm not too worried. We don't have sugar butts or any boosts at the moment. I'm just going to go ahead and keep selling her stuff. And we will grab that. Yeah, I tell you what. We'll grab the sugar butts and the rock busters for a later date. And yeah, no hackers in there. The rock busters are fantastic for mining. As I mentioned, I will be doing a big mining trip at some point soon, but I would like to have better armor and tools. As I've mentioned, when you go into other biomes, it does raise your loot stage, therefore making Horde Knights more lucrative because you're going to find better loot in the loot bags. Not only that, it does raise your game stage, so you will get stronger zombies, but that's, that's not my problem. My problem is... Oh, we've got a couple of piggies here. Easy. A little bit of meat. But yeah, my problem is... I do plan on making quite a lot of series for this game over time. And I would like to eventually build a base in each of the different biomes. So I think for this series, the Survival Guide 1.0, we will be building our main base in the forest. Like I mentioned, middle of the map, nice and easy to travel everywhere that we need to go. Alright, start her off. Uh, those pigs will more than likely be back, and they will be part of the POI, so we might as well get rid of them now. Oh, no, that is not even part of the POI. Crazy. Alright, nice bit of meat. Oh, there's some food back here. What do you got for me? A can of soup, we'll take it. And you let me know how you guys feel about me jumping onto the computer and scouting out a location for the main base. Like I said, it'll make it a lot easier for me to know where we're going to be putting the final base location. And that leaves more time for recording episodes. Oh, beautiful. Look at that legendary part on the ground. We will take it. Oh, shit. Oh, thought we completed a kill zombies challenge. Very nice. Zombie Slayer. What do we got? Kill any zombies. 10,000 XP and some ammo. Can't quite remember, but I think it might be two stacks of ammo that you get for that. Oh, would you believe it? Another legendary part. We'll take it. All right, can we keep that luck rolling? No. <laughs> A man's allowed to dream. Alright, we're not going out there. We do need to pick up the pace. Alright, come on, boat. Always oh, feral. Definitely got to watch that stamina usage. Jesus Christ. Yeah, that, that is the problem with the stump baton. Can take a few hits to take somebody down. Alright, we don't have liquid on us. This will give us 10 water, so we might as well just eat that. Oh, is that the final book for Tech Junkie? Yes. It's a sound that you love to hear. Can't remember what the set bonus is. Like I've said before, when you complete an entire book set, you will receive an additional perk, and for this one, it's Bolt Craft or Robotic Turret Ammo. Not, nothing amazing, but we will, because we are doing the Intellect build, we will be using Robotic Turrets when we can craft them, and they will be incorporated into the Horde base design too. Alright. Cloth, that's fine. Just gotta keep moving. I see you back there, Arlene. You ain't fallen nobody. You too, Darlene. Is the satchel. Perfect. All right. I'm just trying to think. It's going to take us back up. All right. Ah, yeah, right here. This is where the loot is. Might be up there. All right, come on, people. I'm on a deadline. Is that it? We good? Alright, I think we're good. Time to crack into this loot. Alright, 
Furious Fists. We'll go ahead and read that. Now, another thing we could be doing is we could be stockpiling the magazine to bring them back to our base to wait until we craft a better nerd outfit. Now, me personally, I'm not too worried. Books in this game are abundant. We will find a lot of them. This is a really good one. Urban Combat Volume 7. Take 5% less damage and deal 10% more damage when indoors. That one is fantastic for questing. Alright, tools and handy land. Books back here. Handguns. And alright, I think that's about it. But yeah, if you guys notice me missing any loot, don't be afraid to let me know in the comments down below. And last letterbox, nothing. All right. In between commentating, you do miss things. It is inevitable. It's just the way it is. Wonder if we can run this chicken down. Got him. Still quite early on the clock. I am wondering, do we have time to go pick up that supply drop? We might as well. I will turn the quest in first, and we're going to take just a tier 1. I'm going to see if I can get that Mo Power as a quest. Because that is going to help us find electrical books, wiring books. And on top of that, we may even find a better Stumbaton. Damn, two legendary parts. Very, very nice. Drop that crap. Get out of my way. And you know, worst case, in the next episode, because we will have tier 3s unlocked, Jen will send us to the desert. Now we could pop over, visit Trader Bob. This is the reward I was talking about. So one one stack, sorry. We will take the 762. You can take the robotic Tara ammo and sell it. Sells for 600 dukes. That sells for the most out of all of these ammo types. Alright, no mo power. We're just going to take this one. find anyone to do that job. All right, and look at that, it was the house next door. Just going to say to that start. All right, start us off with something good. Arm it up. We'll take it. So yeah, I believe nine more armored up magazines, and we can craft tier four armor. Also check this for vehicles. I'm just going to scrap both of those. Alright, soldier in a tier one. That's just because we're in the burnt biome. Check this very quickly. Trash, and we will read the medical. As I check this bag, I don't want to be checking too much, but these bags can spawn legendary parts. The more legendary parts we can find, the better, because um, eventually we do want all of our gear to be tier 6. Alright, got to watch that stamina. You know, eventually you want all of your armor, tier 6, your tools, your weapons, your guns. And a lot of the time, you may not even need a tier 6 item. You know, it could be a tier 6 pickaxe, a tier 5 steel pickaxe would do just as good. But sometimes that doesn't matter. Sometimes you just want the better one. <laughs> Alright. Oh, that more forge ahead. Are we four off now. We search that. Oh, come on. Hey, would you look at that? Tier one pistol. Not as <laughs> not as helpful to us now than it could have been in the first week. But it is the only weapon we have that uses nine mm ammo, excluding the pipe pistol. Check these quickly. Nothing. Anything back here? Scraping for fun. Antique planet. Alright. This right here. This is carpet. 
No, it's fake carpet, never mind. <laughs> I was going to say, if that was a roller carpet, it's one of the uh, best things in the game to break down cloth. But we got scammed. Oh. All right, zombies are clear. All right, tier one loot, what do we got? Got a bit of bone knife, but I might as well take it. Scrap that one. The armor plating mod is not the greatest because you, you definitely you want the banded armor plating mods because they are twice as good. Might as well take all of that stuff. And we'll eat that. It's going to make us thirsty, but I believe we should have something to drink. Back in the bike. Oh, another forge ahead. Only need three more. And there is a very good chance that, one, we get a skill crafting bundle for the reward from this quest. Uh, we'll just leave him to it. And on top of that, if we do make our way to that airdrop, that airdrop could potentially have Forge Ahead. They seem to have quite a high chance at spawning the Forge Ahead magazines. But on top of that, we also know that Trader Jen is located on the other side of the town which means we have not looted her compound which will also be some more forge ahead books so that cement mixer is as good as ours and good job i knew you could do it right what is it oh cigars <sighs> tell you what i'm gonna take it and i recommend you do too so i don't think we have the cigar mod yeah, no, we don't. Amazing. What the cigar mod does is it gives you plus one to strength. It also stacks with all of the other skill mods, the ones that give you plus one to any of the other skills. It stacks with that, including the strength ones. So it can be great to use in the mining helmet if you use those points to speak into minus 69 at mother load. But it also gives you plus 10% bartering. So it's also good to have in your enforcer glasses. So being able to craft cigars is definitely a huge thing. And I am most certainly taking the nail gun. I don't think we have one. I, I know we don't. <laughs> we have a hammer, and I don't know when we will come across one of those next. Apart from that, the 5,000 dukes would be pretty nice. All right, special jobs. 1k away for Trader Bob. So he's, he's closer than our bases. And... Feeling a bit under the weather. You can have that. Here to help. And I'm keeping the rest. Sometime. So, since we didn't get any guaranteed books from Jen because we chose to be able to craft cigars instead, I'm going to load up the bike with all of our good stuff. All the stuff we want to be taking home. We'll take that full grip. Might as well take the murky water. I'm going to sort this bike out, and then we're going to pop over and see the other Trader Gen. All right, I can see Trader Gen right up there. We are running very short on time. Not even stopping for leather boxes. We just want to get there, raid those workstations before we do anything, and see if we can snag a couple Forger head books. We may have to do some driving around during the night to see if we can find some we don't get enough oh you son of a bitch that's a real church it's not even jeans ah uh, oh, she's back there <laughs> oh no all right we're pressing it for time is that jen yeah that's definitely jen all right we do have a door on this side we got 30 minutes time to snag and grab leave the door open jen will be fine we got shit to steal. One forge ahead. Two forge ahead. Three forge ahead. I'm pretty sure that was what we needed. Now we're going to dip in here quickly. We're going to steal her books. I would have liked to check her inventory quickly. But I don't think we're going to have time to do that. Right, cheap planet. So, what are you buying today? Ah, uh, looking for books, Jean. What do you got for me? 
two armored up. We'll take them. We'll take the tech planet. Ooh, vehicle fuel saver. We'll take that as well. And should be good on the rest. What about mods? I am looking for an intellect mod. And she doesn't have any of that. All right. Will do. Hold on, hold on. Got any hackers and sugar butts. I will take those. Thank you, Jen. Shut that door. Get rid of this guy before he starts running. Get rid of this guy too. Now, another thing that we are going to be bottlenecked by, and this is going to happen to a lot of people, is the crucible. Somebody mentioned in the comments that you can get a guaranteed crucible for completing the challenge cop killer, and that's for killing 50 cops. Apart from that, you need to find 75 forger head books to be able to craft your own. Now, what I ended up doing in my single player world, and this worked quite effectively, and it's probably what we're going to do here too, but traders have a very high chance of selling crucibles. From my knowledge, it seems to be Pretty much everywhere you go, you find them. Now, if we can get our hands on a good ratchet, we can go ahead and we can spend a day wrenching cars, wrenching houses, lights, the works, pop a sugar butt, craft our cigar, and we could even make some enforcer glasses. And we can go ahead and sell all of that. And that will give us enough money to be able to buy that crucible. All right, we're going to read that. That is an excellent mod to have. Makes you use less gas in your vehicles. Sumpaton quality 2, and cement mixer, beautiful. Alright, what can we pop in there? Not a lot. Oh, she's barrel. And we're thirsty, alright, so. Oh, we've got one pure mineral water, I'm going to go ahead and drink that. I don't know how many engines we have either. I am very tempted to stay in this biome and wrench down some cars. I'm not going to... I mean, I could pop one hackers. They're not really essential. 20% is a big bonus, but we're using a tier 2 wrench. And I don't even know how many points that we do have. Yeah, and to salvage up. So tell you what, we've got three points. I'm going to pop another point into that. Like I said, I would like to find more of the salvaging for fun books so we can eventually craft a ratchet and an impact driver. And I tell you what, normally I wouldn't recommend Lucky Looter. It does add a 5% to your loot bonus that stacks up all the way to 25%. But the main thing for it for me is to loot faster, especially when making videos because it makes it a lot easier to get in and out of containers. Yeah, tell you what guys, I think that's what I'm going to do through the night. I think I'm going to wrench cars. The parts are going to help for money, for crafting, and most importantly, the more engines we can get, the better, because we're going to need them to craft up cement mixes and to craft the motorcycle, the 4x4, and the gyrocopter. So I'm going to go ahead, start wrenching some vehicles, and then we're going to make our way over to that airdrop. Another thing for you guys who play with Loot Respawn turned on, if you do enjoy looting every container that you possibly can, maybe hold off from wrenching the cars that are in towns or in between cities and instead wrench cars that are a part of a POI because you can take that quest and that will reset all of those cars, whereas once you've wrenched these cars, they are gone for good. Like I said, we have loot respawn turned off, so that doesn't matter too much over here. We did find our first engine, though. Alright, I just seen as well that we did get acid, so that means we do, in fact, have the book to get acid from medical cabinets. Now, we've just pulled up outside Moe's Grocery. One thing that I do know about this POI, let's hope this isn't a bad idea, eh? 
is that in this POI there is a cement mixer. But not just that, back here is where the main loot is. It's in that room there. We are going to have zombies. So we are going to have to deal with them. Anyone back here? Oh. Oh, beautiful, that was it. All right, what do we got? Got forge ahead and some cement, some clay. I'm going to take it all. We're going to run in here, snag that end loot. Uh, we're just going to scrap that, eat that, take that. And Gravedigger mod, very nice. I don't actually know if we have one of those. Tools Digest, Iron Tools Quality 5. So we will most definitely be making some of those. And, oh, that medical supplies there. I don't know if I've uh, noticed those before. A recog, very nice. One thing I do know, though, if we come up here, so this is Moe's Grocery. This is a Tier 1 POI. You can climb up here, and inside the roof, there should be a Shamway Foods Crate. Right there. <laughs> and one core meal. We'll go ahead and leave that there. So yeah, I think I'm going to go pick up that airdrop and then I think we might start making our way back to the starter base and in the next episode, now that we have the cement mixer unlocked, we'll probably try craft up one of those and, you know, try get our tools upgraded, get more situated and prepared to start doing some big building projects. Alright, we'll be stopping for mailboxes. Art of Mining. And Furious Fists. Alright. And I might as well take the opportunity to wrench cars on our way there. Because yeah, like I said, all of these parts are going to help with crafting. And if we can get our hands on more engines, the more the merrier. We got a deer. I'm not even going to worry about it though. So, yeah, there's a forge ahead, just like I mentioned. Crafting skill bundle. We got tech planet, assault rifles, and wiring. Um, I'll take that. We are getting very chocolate with loot. Time is cracking on too. I'm pretty sure our base will be. Yeah, not, not too far away. Chuck wee waypoint down there. 2.3 kilometers. Alright, there's our second engine. And there goes our third engine. Pretty sure our inventory's pretty chocker at the moment. We take a look. Yeah, we've pretty much got no space left. We could probably wrench one more car. And if we get a battery or an engine, that would be about it. And yeah, I'm looking forward to showcasing to you guys what the Stun Repulsor mod is all about and all the hype around it. Not only that, there is a candy in the game called Nerd Tats. Now, in previous alphas, I don't know why, and I don't know if it was a bug or what, but that never used to work with the Repulsor mod. Because what the Repulsor mod does, when your stun baton shocks an enemy, this will send them flying backwards, but not just one, it will send a group flying backwards. It'll only electrocute one zombie, but it will send multiple flying away from you. Now what the nerd tats do is when you when you shock a zombie, it shocks multiple targets at once. Now, when you pair the repulsor mod and nerd tats together now, not only does it shock the entire group of zombies, but it sends the entire group of zombies flying. The way that it was always intended to be. So we're going to have to keep our eye out for nerd tats as well. And grab ourselves some of those. Hope you guys all enjoyed the 50 tips and tricks as well. That video did take me a wee bit to put together. It's why the Let's Play episodes slowed down a wee bit. I also have a bunch of other guides that I'm working on, mainly aimed at newer players. So make sure to keep an eye out for those and let me know in the comments down below if there's any specific guides you would like to see me cover. 
As I've mentioned before, the goal with this channel is to eventually have a guide for everything, but that comes over time. Alright guys, know the drill, drop box, slam that shit in there. <laughs> I will worry about that in the next episode, so don't worry guys, this storage room will be finished. All in here will be finished, everything will be correctly labelled, we will get the base properly set up. But yeah guys, as the sun comes up, that means our time is up. I hope you all enjoyed the episode, and if you're new to the channel, don't forget to like and subscribe for more 7 Days to Die content. But as always, stay safe out there survivors and I'll see you in the next one.